Hello and welcome to the episode 326 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The begrudging continuation of a residency, two album releases and a bit of solo work are the main stories of the day. 22nd of November 1960. At the end of 24 hours of non-stop travelling, George Harrison managed to return to his home in Liverpool after receiving an immediate deportation notice from West Germany on the previous day. That night, the Beatles, with John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, Stu Sutcliffe on bass and Pete Best on drums, kept honouring their contract with the Kaiser Keller Club owner Bruno Koschmeider, playing their 50th night at the venue in Hamburg. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, with George Harrison back in the lineup and with Paul McCartney on bass instead of Sutcliffe, performed an evening concert at a Cavern Club in Liverpool, topping a bill featuring Jerry and the Pacemakers and Earl Preston and the TTs. On this date in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, were engaged at the majestic barroom in Birkenhead for another of their top rank concerts. You might want to check episode 179 if you can't remember how this series of concerts came to happen. On the 22nd of November 1963, with the Beatles, the Beatles' second album, was released in the United Kingdom. The advance orders for the album were at record levels, with over 27,000 copies already sold the moment the album hit the shelves. The sales would go on extremely well, with an astonishing, for the time, half a million copies sold. That night, the band's autumn tour continued with a stop at the Globe Cinema in Stockton on Tees for another two full houses of delirious fans. Routine rule most of this day in 1967. At Norman's film production, the editing of Magical Mystery Tour went on as usual. At the EMI Studios, instead, engineer Jeff Emerick made copies of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band its reprise, and No Were Men for the Yellow Submarine film production. The work was completed between 2.30 and 3.30 pm. Later on, though, between 7 pm and 2 am, George Harrison worked on the premises for his solo effort for the soundtrack of the film Wonderwall. Let's close the dances with the second album release of the episode. On this date, in 1968, the Beatles, also known as the White Album, came out in the UK. It was the band's ninth LP to be released on the British market, the first to be a double album and the last to have a dedicated mono mix. The Beatles initially spent seven weeks at number one in the UK charts, returning to number one for one more week on the 1st of February 1969. This time, the advance orders moved more than 250,000 copies. The first pressing of the album came with a unique number on each of the copies. Fun fact! A rotor for Chang has been collecting white albums for some time. Chang is interested in the way each cover had aged differently, and on the story behind each copy, narrated, so to speak, by venture writings or even private artwork scribbled by the successive owners on the white cover. In 2020, Chang had a collection of over 2,700 copies of the first pressing of the white album. Before closing the episode, let me remind you to visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can be instrumental to my production of more and better music-related content. Come again tomorrow for live shows, TV dates and more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.